Hi, my name is Augusta and I want to talk about 13 Reasons Why. I know this is super old, this show, but I, when, I don't know, I, everything I talk about is super old. <laughs> and well, that's kind of a relative term, but still, like everything that I talk about is always kind of like, I just, I'm always late to the party. But still, there are things I want to say about 13 Reasons Why, so I'm going to say it. Um, so this show is about a cool, calm, collected, witty, traumatized, quote-unquote, girl who's voted best ass, like, in, you know, like, this stupid, mean, unofficial, I don't know, polling that went on from the mean kids at her school. Um, and so, because, you know, of course she's cool, calm, collected, witty, and super physically attractive, because God forbid she should be actually, you know, hysteric and, uh, gross and greasy and unwashed and, (laughs) and with, you know, a lack of sleep and, no physical attractiveness like like a real traumatized girl might be because nobody wants to watch a show about that apparently (laughs) i'm sure no the thing is there are people who want to watch a show about that and those are the people who need to feel represented on screen the people who are actually outcasts who are actually you know traumatized and not cool and not liked and alone. And those are the people who need to feel like they have someone they can relate to on screen. But this was made for people who don't need that, people who want to envision themselves as like a really cool, calm, collected, witty, attractive person who gets picked on all the time, poor them, so they can feel like the victim. I just kind of talked about this too with um, It, where I talked, excuse me, burp, They talked about how those kids were like, I mean, they say that they're super picked on and, um, like, losers, but when you really look at it, they're actually pretty cool, and that's a way for the writers to, like, they wrote these characters to, like, get their hooks in both sets of people, people who are cool and people who aren't, because both of them want to feel like they're cool and both of them want to feel like they're picked on and victims and whatever. So instead of, like, being real, they just kind of go for this ridiculous fantasy of being, like, super cool and also super picked on, you know? The writers do. And it's really annoying, and I don't... And, and yeah. Um, So that's, like, the first problem I had with this show. And then the second problem... Um, which is, like, the biggest one, is that it's what I would call, and I just came up with this as a result of watching this show, uh, gratuitous misery. You know how there's, like, gratuitous violence, and it's, like, super graphic, and over the top, and ridiculous? That's what this show is, but not for violence, for misery, for pain and suffering. So, like, like, they sensationalize violence with, like, gratuitous violence and graphic violence. I feel like that's what they're doing here with misery, with pain and suffering, with, um, you know, that kind of, just, like, depression. Um, they're sensationalizing it, and because that's because people, it's, it's gratuitous violence and gratuitous misery is sensational to people. People like to stare at it. They don't empathize with the people who are, you know, like, getting their brains beat out or, you know, going through a suicidal depression, they just like to stare at it. That's just something that a lot of people, that's just something that humanity kind of likes to do, like, you know, in a general way. Not all humans, but a lot of them. Um, Because they're just sort of fascinated by it. They don't actually care about the people who are going through it. They just kind of want to look, you know, like watching a, a car crash, you know? 
Um, and the thing is, like, it's it's not only just like it's I mean it's sensationalizing the misery, but also, um, I mean that also shows how this show, Thirteen Reasons Why, is not made for people who are actually suffering and need help. It's made for people who are perfectly fine and just want to stare at the people who are, you know, suffering. And because, so another reason why that's true is because this gratuitous misery is only going to be hurtful to people who are actually going through depression. Because, okay, and, uh, and look, this is my experience. Like, me growing up, I was kind of basically taught to believe that most people are going through way worse stuff than I was going through, and yet I was, like, still really depressed and almost couldn't function a lot of the time. And, <coughs> sorry, um, so I just, so the, the idea that there are people out there going through way worse stuff than me, way worse, bu- way worse bullying and, and pain and all that kind of stuff, that idea just made me spiral spiral deeper into my depression because I thought, you know, if there are people out there, if most people out there are going through worse stuff and they all are still chugging along just fine and here I am barely able to function, I must be weak. There must be something wrong with me. And so, and then feeling, you know, sorry for myself for being weak just made me feel weaker and made me hate myself more and it kind of just you know it spiraled you know it was like this negative feedback loop or positive feedback loop I don't know anyway so the thing is like presenting this picture to people that like okay there's this girl who like this and this and this and this and this and this and this happened to her like just thing on top of thing on top of thing Like, she was, um, uh, like, you know, um, embarrassing photos of her were passed around, and she, um, lost all of her friends, and she, um, got plagiarized, um, she's, uh, sexually assaulted at one point by this guy um who also she witnesses raping her friend and um she doesn't do anything about it which what kind of horrible person doesn't do anything about it um and then on like on top of everything she was raped which is so f- First of all, like, why she was sexually assaulted by him before and she saw him rape another girl. So, and like, she's clearly like scared of boys somewhat after that because she, like, she doesn't, um, she's not comfortable with Clay, uh, having sex. So there's no, like, it doesn't make sense that she would be comfortable being alone with this guy in a hot tub at, you know, near the end of the series or season when he rapes her, it doesn't make, I'm not blaming her, I'm just saying it doesn't make sense for her character to do that, to, like, be okay being alone with this guy, not to, like, immediately leave, um, and it only happened so that the writers could, like, stuff in more gratuitous misery, so, because it doesn't make sense it just happened because you know yeah like the writers yeah like i said they just wanted to stuff in more misery as much as they could (sighs) so um yeah so yeah so on top of everything she's raped and yet she still kept going after that even if only for a little bit and here i am like, this is what I would be thinking, like, back in my teenage and early 20s. Like, if I was watching this show, I would be like, here, this girl is probably, like, a lot of girls out there who, and she's going through this and this and this and this and this, and she's still going. And here I am dealing with way less 
and I'm ready to kill myself. So I must be weak. There must be something wrong with me. I hate myself. Um, That's what I would be thinking if I was in a more fragile state and I watched this show. So I'm sure that's what a lot of people thought. A lot of people who were in a fragile state thought when they watched this show. And that's so damaging. That's really not good for people with depression to see that. Um, And it's just unrealistic and gratuitous, the amount of misery she went through. It's ridiculous. Over the top, you know? Like, nobody actually goes through that. The, the fact of the matter is, so I'm going to tell this to you, uh, if you're one of those people who are in a fragile state and you saw this show and you thought, I'm weak. No, you're not. That's not, most people are not going through that kind of stuff. Most people are actually fine. The vast majority of people are okay. Um, they're not going through what this girl's going through and they're not going through what you're going through they're okay. I promise. (laughs) You think that everyone is, it's really easy to think that everyone is going through the same thing that you are as you're going through it because that's just kind of the lens that you're seeing the world through. But I'm here to tell you that it's not true. Most people are fine. It's, 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 um, a minority of people who are suicidal or really depressed. Um, and I'm not saying that there aren't a lot of people who are depressed and suicidal, but they're still in a minority. Most people are fine. Okay, so don't feel like you're weak or there's something wrong with you because because everyone else is doing just fine, even though they're dealing with the exact same stuff. They're not. Um, you're dealing with stuff that's probably worse. So, okay, just <laughs> I want to let you know that. So basically... This movie is not helpful to people who are actually going through depression and suffering. Um, And I'm sure it's not helpful to bullies either. It's not going to teach anyone to not bully since, I don't know, when has a suicide ever led to like a significant decrease in bullying? I mean, this show definitely did lead to a lot of discussion, but... From watching a lot of the responses, like a lot of the video responses um, to this show, I can tell you that a lot of the discussion that this show has sparked has been basically wrong, wrong discussion. The people who are making video responses, more often than not, the vast majority of them are wrong about the things that they're saying. Um, whether they're for or against the show. Um, so, and the thing is, like, even though some of them do say things that are, some of the video responses have been actually right, the thing is, the amount of people who watch the show is going to be way bigger than the amount of people who watch any specific video response, um, to the show. So, the th- more people are going to get the message that the show is sending out, not the people who are responding the- to the show in the right way. So, this show is just really not helpful. It should have just started right. It shouldn't have led to discussion that may or may not be right. It should have been right. The show should have been right in the message that it was putting out. And, and uh, you know... In, and in being helpful to people. It should have just started that way. Um, uh, so, like, the next thing is I've dealt with depression as long as I can remember, like, off and on. And I've been suicidal off and on. Um, so, I can tell you I have seven tips written down for dealing with depression. And I hope that this helps you because I feel like everyone's talking, I mean, everyone did talk about the show, but nobody actually really talked about, like, how to, I mean, nobody actually, you know, gave, like, any tips for dealing with depression, and that's because I think a lot of people just, like I said, most people, again, are fine. Most people don't have to deal with depression. Um, so, so I hear, okay, so the, I mean, it's different for everyone, but still, I, I have, I'll say what I can say based on my experience. So the first tip is to have hope and faith. And 
to me, hope is, um, well, faith is the belief that everything will be okay in the end. And hope is the belief that good things will happen in the middle. And I don't know if that's like the technical definitions of hope and faith, but those are what I think of when I think of hope and faith. Um, and the thing is like, so growing up, I didn't have hope and faith. I very much believed that, um, the worst case scenario usually happened. You have to be super careful and vigilant in order to keep the bad stuff from happening. Um, because more often than not, the bad stuff is going to happen and not the good stuff. And that was I don't know, partially probably because I believed that that was kind of true for me. Like, bad stuff kept happening to me. Um, And so, like, you know, that just kind of reinforced my belief that, like, I'm gonna, like, I I would go through depression and then I would get better for a bit and then I would go through another another depression. And so it was like this endless cycle and I I felt like this is, it is, it's, it's an endless cycle. That's what I was thinking, like, um, in my early days of college, I really, I mean, that was the last, I mean, not the, okay, it was probably the most recent, really, really, really suicidal point in my life was, like, the first couple years of college, because I truly kind of started to believe that, like, I was just always going to be in a cycle of being depressed and in horrible pain for long periods of time and then getting better for just like a short period of time and then going back to being depressed. And that was just never going to end for me. Um, Like, so um, that's what I thought. And so and so what I had to learn was to have hope. And so one way that I did that, one way that I kind of, like, understood how to believe in hope was to realize that God wants us to be happy. He wants us to have the things that we want. So, just because, you know, so far everything has been bad, that doesn't mean in the future things can't change. That doesn't mean that, okay, life is not like an experiment where you're doing um, the same thing over and over and over again, and you can't help but do the same thing over and over again. You can do something different, and something different will happen, probably. So, so there's no reason to think that good things won't happen, and there's every reason to think that good things will happen, because God loves you, and he wants you to be happy, and he wants you to have the things that you want, because Like, I mean, I would imagine myself as God and I would be like, yeah, if I was God, I would want, like, my people to be happy and to have the things that they want. And sometimes that's not possible, but, and it's complicated, but whenever possible, I would want them to have that. Um, so everything could change, like, in the next second and things could be great. Um, And getting through is always going to be absolutely worth it, I can tell you from experience, because every time I got through a depression, not only was it worth it, but my life on the other side was better than my life had ever been before. Every time, every time I go through a depression, a a depression, (laughs) depression, and come out the other side, my life is better than ever. Um, so I learned to have hope. And so that's like my number one tip is to have hope. Um, and then like my second tip is to work out. It really helps a lot. Um, I started working out uh, when I was in college and it just relieved so much stress and, um, kept me sane. And okay. And then the next tip is to, is like basically this, I mean, it's kind of in the same, (laughs) category, which is just to, like, take care of yourself physically. So the next tip, tip number three, is to eat well. And so part of why um, I think I got so suicidal and depressed and, like, right on the edge of, like, killing myself in college was because I was 
like feeling really fat. So I was trying to just eat salad. And I think that really contributed to how horrible I was feeling. So you need to eat well. You should go vegan so that you can eat as much as you want and eat healthy foods and not feel like crap. Um, and eat enough to make yourself, um, feel good, um, to make yourself satisfied. And, you know, uh, it's one thing that really helped me with that, like later on, um, was watching Freely the Banana Girls videos. So check those videos out if you want to. Um, and then, my next tip, tip number four, is to sleep well. So this is also in the category of taking care of yourself. And so I think another reason why I was so depressed and suicidal was because I was barely getting any sleep. And that's because I was putting so much pressure on myself to do well in school. So I would stay up almost every night, like almost all night. I would get maybe like an hour or two of sleep every night. Yeah, it's because I was studying. I really was. Like, a lot of people don't get a lot of sleep in college because they're partying, but I was studying. I was trying really, really hard to get good grades um, because I thought my whole future depended on that. Um, so, and, and it didn't. Like, I graduated college and it didn't really help me that much. <laughs> I graduated with honors and it didn't help me that much. I haven't gotten a single, like, actual real job out of that. So... Whatever it is that's, like, keeping you up at night, you should really, like, reconsider. Or, like, keeping you up in the morning or whenever it is that you need sleep. You should really, like, reconsider whether you actually need to do that thing that's keeping you from sleeping or if you would be better off sleeping. Because, like, eventually in college I decided it would be better if I slept than if I went to every single class because that's what they told me I had to do was go to every single class in order to do well in school and I started like skipping almost all my classes and sleeping instead and I ended up getting way better grades (laughs) so reconsider what you need to do um reconsider the things that are keeping you from sleeping and sleep instead (laughs) if you can um and then my next tip tip number five is to get a pet it really helps a lot I like I got a betta fish in college and it just helps a lot to feel like there's someone, even just like a little fish, <laughs> who's keeping you company and you have with you and who depends on you. Um, it, it really helps a lot to keep you from wanting to kill yourself. Um, and then tip number six is, okay, so like this was even kind of like addressed in the show, but not on purpose. (laughs) I don't think, I do not think at all that they knew that they were kind of like giving off this message. And because they didn't even like follow the message through to its conclusion, like they should have, because, um, the main character talked to a school counsel counselor who was like really not empathetic to her. And that was kind of like the last straw. And then she killed herself after that. Um, And what should have happened was she should have... Okay, so I'm going to tell you what you should do is don't talk to anyone who might not understand since it'll only hurt more to talk to someone. You'll end up hurting more after talking to someone who doesn't understand what you're going through. And, um, And I don't know for sure how suicide hotlines work. Um, if they, if people who work on suicide hotlines actually have gone through like depression and suicidal thoughts and stuff like that, I would imagine not. I would imagine that the people who work there are probably the type of people who think that they can like fix someone's problems with just one phone call and then it would be over. Cause I've heard horror stories about suicide hotlines, um, about, like, the response that people got after calling suicide hotlines. Um, and the response to this show, from the videos that I've watched, shows that there are still a ton of people out there who don't understand depression or pain at all. So, yeah, the thing is, so, I would advise you not to call suicide hotlines. I would advise you to 
suss people out before bearing your soul to them. So don't talk to anyone until you know that they're going to be empathetic to your particular situation. Um, so you kind of have to like, you know, talk to them a little bit and be like, you know, have you ever had to like be there for a friend like day and night because they were going through something? Or have you ever gone through something like this? Or what do you think about this? And do you think that this is like really serious and worth like being depressed over? Because a lot of people that I saw were kind of like, yeah, I can understand her being suicidal if she got raped, but like other than that, there's no reason to be suicidal. And that's not how it worked, okay? That's not how it works. <laughs> you could be suicidal from like any little thing. It's, it's, it's any one of those things that she went through, any one of the bullying incidents could have set her off. And it's not up to anyone else to decide like what's um, reasonable for you to be suicidal over. Because if you're suicidal, that means that you're really hurt and broken and it doesn't, it doesn't matter what set you off. It doesn't, people, other people don't get to decide that, but other people feel like they do get to decide that. So you have to like talk to people, kind of get to know someone before you bear your soul to them because you need to know that they're going to be empathetic to you because that's the only thing that's going to make you feel better. It's not going to make you feel better to talk to someone who's going to be like, yeah, you should just kind of get over that because that's not worth being suicidal over. So, so that you, that's my, yeah, my advice to you is to not talk to strangers about what you're going through. <laughs> Only talk to people who you know, who you've sussed out because it's who you, who you know that are going to be empathetic to you. Um, and then my seventh and final tip is to use the internet because, um, there are just so many videos and things of like animals and silly funny things that'll make you smile and distract you from what you're going through and um there I mean also there are people online who I'm sure you could find like communities of people online who have probably gone through like what you've gone through and you could probably use that to find someone to talk to um or maybe you could find like there's lots of, um, <coughs> uh, well, I'm just gonna say it. There's lots of ways to, like, get movies and shows on the internet without, you know, technically paying for them. Um, and I think that movies and television are a great way to find people who you relate to, characters that you relate to, and having that is, like just a step down, just a step down from having, like, an actual person who you relate to and who you feel, like, gets you. So, the internet is a magnificent thing. It changed my life when I, like, really discovered the internet, like, really discovered it and started to use it, and, like, now I'm addicted to it, but it's keeping me alive, so, <laughs> um, yeah, use the internet. Um, and then the last thing I want to say is that it's hard to make concrete statements when we're dealing with the human soul, but I do believe, I really do, that there comes a point where you literally actually cannot go on without outside help, um, where you're just so hurt and broken that you just can't keep going, uh, without help. So... Just, I think that there that there's a point. That's a point in, that exists, and I think all you can do is pray that you never reach that point at a time in your life when you're alone and you don't have anyone to help you. Um. Okay. So I hope that this was sort of helpful. Um. And yeah, the show is really bad. If you haven't seen it, don't watch it. <laughs> um. And, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Um, she's, uh, sexually assaulted at one point by this guy, um, 
who also she witnesses raping her friend and um she doesn't do anything about it which what kind of horrible person doesn't do anything about it um which is so first of all like why she was sexually assaulted by him before and she saw him rape another girl so and like she's clearly like scared of boys somewhat after that because she like she doesn't um she's not comfortable with clay uh having sex so there's no like it doesn't make sense that she would be comfortable being alone with this guy in a hot tub at you know near the end of the series or season when he rapes her it doesn't make i'm not blaming her i'm just saying it doesn't make sense for her character to do that to like be okay being alone with this guy not to like immediately leave um and it only happened so that the writers could like stuff in more gratuitous misery so because it doesn't make sense it just happened because you know yeah like the writers yeah like i said they just wanted to stuff in more misery as much as they could so um yeah so yeah so on top of everything she's raped 